April 18, 1981. A professional baseball game was played. Who really cares, right? There are more baseball games played in a year than there are hair follicles on your head. What makes this one so special? This particular game was played between minor league teams Pawtucket, which isn't a place I made up, Red Sox, and the Rochester Red Wings. This game had a lot of things going for it, like the color red, two future Hall of Famers, and oh yeah, uh, a lot of innings. Uh, a lot of, a lot of innings. Oh my god, so many innings. So many innings, please stop. Oh my god. 33 innings of baseball that spanned it over eight hours. The game started on a Saturday, continued through Easter Sunday, and eventually ended on June 23rd because the game eventually had to be postponed. And what better way to celebrate this completely absurd game than to try and make a game that's just as long in MLB The Show. So sit back, relax, grab your favorite Kid Cuisine and or Lunchable and or Chef Boyardee and or Dunkaroos. Yeah, I was a pretty fat kid. And join me on this quest for the longest baseball game. So let's get all the rules and whatnot out of the way. My goal is to carry the CPU to at least a 33 inning game and doing it in a legit manner. This means no shenanigans like controlling both teams because any person can do that. I will be playing on All-Star Difficulty, which is the default difficulty for most of the Diamond Dynasty online stuff. The team I'll be picking is... The Mets, baby. Love the Mets. All right, baby, let's go. Not just because I'm a Mets fan. I'll explain a little bit later. And I'll go up against the Orioles because... Baltimore Orioles, number one. At being bad. <laughs> Though in hindsight, I should have went up against, like, the Pirates or somebody else. So the game starts and it's just like any other ordinary game of baseball. Throughout the game, you start to see why I chose the Orioles to play against. I think the Orioles are better suited to field crops rather than baseballs. Adding gloves. Swing and a pop-up. Val territory for the catcher. He can't squeeze it. He dropped the ball! Oh, there is this one guy I want you to keep your eye on. Ryan goddamn Mountcastle. You'll see why later. Anyway, I have a 7-3 lead going into the ninth inning, which is a problem because in order to get into extra innings, we need a tie game. So my strategy here is to get two outs in the inning and then intentionally put runners on base, then give up a game-tying hit where I fumble around the field so they can score the tying run. So I load the bases up, give the batter a pitch to hit, and... The pitch. And that'll do it. It's a ball that's hit right at my fielder, thus ending the game. In situations like this, there's not even anything I can do because I get locked into an animation. A nuke could have hit the stadium and I would have still caught this ball. Wow, we don't even get into extra innings itself on the first try. What a shit ass start. So this game is much more of the same. I get out to a 7-3 lead again in the ninth. I assure you this isn't the same footage from before. And I load the bases up again. I give the batter a pitch to hit again, and this time I'm able to allow the tying run to score. Over an hour of playtime, and we're just starting to get into extra innings. Anyway, here's why I picked the Mets. Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Did you see that? Let me explain for the ignorant. For the 2020 season, MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred instituted a rule where a runner would automatically be placed on second base to start extra innings. Not only does this suck ass for real baseball, but this sucks ass for me and this very, very, very specific challenge. So here's how it goes. I give up a soft bloop hit, which scores a runner from second that shouldn't have been there anyway. And I lose. I lose in the 10th inning via Ghost Runner. <sighs> this discovery just made the challenge 10 times harder. Thankfully, this time around, the game was conveniently tied by the time I got to the ninth inning. So let me actually explain my strategies for extra innings. Any offense that I would produce would end the game, thus ending the challenge. And we don't want that. 
So for offense, I just bunt, which is an easy out. Also, I'm the home team because if the CPU does grab the lead, I can at least have one shot to try and come back and tie it again. I chose the Mets simply because they had the two best starters in baseball. Once I get to extra innings, I turn the ball over to Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer to eat as many innings as humanly possible. So that's how this goes. I bunt, I mow hitters down. Throughout playing, the Orioles do some weird shit like this. Lays down a bunt to the right side. They get one. And they put the tag on him for the out. Ah uh, yes, the unnecessary Derek Jeter fadeaway jump throw to the third baseman who proceeds to do an even more unnecessary diving tag to a stationary runner. Makes sense. I eventually made it to the 12th inning. After doing this for so long, you start to become a little lazy with it. You're just trying to get through it. And when you do that, this happens. Swing and a ball lifted left field. A three run home run. My fate was sealed. So for this one, I made it to the ninth inning again, and I'm just messing around at this point. I make a dive with Brandon Nimmo and he gets injured because Nimmo can't do anything without some part of his body breaking down. But look at this. His injury graphic thingy is staying on the screen even during gameplay. Get the fuck out of the way! I can't see! So my strategy is the same as before, but I make it to the 13th inning this time before the MLB The Show Gods decide they didn't want me to continue this little game anymore. A ball hit directly to my second baseman can't be fielded. Cool. Then the very next batter hits one out to center field and for some reason, he drops it. Cool. Shit like this just can't happen, especially with that dumb runner starting at second. So I lose again, but progress is being made. So for this attempt, I came across a little game breaking discovery that should make this challenge a whole lot more easier. You can actually just turn the extra inning runner at second base off. <laughs> you dumb bitch. So I'm tied in the ninth inning with runners on base and the Orioles hit a ball about 537 miles per hour. But Alonzo at first is more than up for the task, unlike his teammates, and catches the ball. On to extras we go. You know, after doing this for so long, you start to lose a little bit of your mind. You start noticing little things, like the bunting animation. Just look at it. Why is he breathing so rapidly? <laughs> Some mind-losing moments later, we make it to the 15th inning. And you remember that guy I told you to remember? Ryan Mountcastle? He gets the game-winning RBI. Another hour of my life down the drain. So I'm losing, believe it or not, heading into the ninth inning. I don't know why I said believe it or not, as if I haven't been losing this whole video at this point. So I try and fight my way back desperately so I don't waste any more of my time like I already have been. And then something crazy happens. Because you doubt the pitcher wants this to go to a 3-1 count. Center field. Way back there, it's got a chance. Out of here. Ball game. I hit a home run. I hit an accidental walk-off. When will any person be in any situation where this quote is ever said? It's like attempting to purposefully fail a class and you get an accidental A+. Just mind-blowing. I can't believe it. This is probably the worst win I've ever gotten in any video game or any life event. So for this attempt, I mow down dudes with the Grom in extra innings like a lawn mower mows grass. I'm running out of material, guys. Oh my god. In the 17th inning, the Grom starts to fade. The bases are loaded. I bring in a reliever and we get out of the jam, including this strikeout where the batter turns his bat into firewood. Strike three, got him swinging. Very impressive, considering he wasn't even holding on to the bat. We eventually bring in Mad Max to do some work as a part of my two-headed pitching monster strategy. We do very well until a random ass home run in the 23rd inning. And that's that. Hey, we made great headway in this run just when I was about to give up. 
The 23rd inning? That's like two and a half games of baseball right there. But we're still short, and let's hope we can make an improvement. So in extra innings, I decided to go with Max first, as opposed to DeGrom. Anyway, bunt, bunt, bunt. Even the CPU has lost its mind at this point. Runner on the go, trying to move him over here. Odor. He is safe! Do you ever look at someone and wonder, what is going on inside their head? We reach the 16th inning, and guess who? This one blasted deep to left, way out of here, home run. Yep, he smacks a home run. And all of a sudden, this little run I was on has a lot in common with my will to live. They're both dead and buried. Step number nine is just like all the rest. Yada, yada, yada. Look who it is! Smacks a double, which isn't too bad, but then it's followed up by the most well-placed and slowest single I've ever seen in my whole life. Honestly, I've seen senior citizens with hip replacements that move faster than this base hit. I lose, whatever. Okay, so I'm tired of just recapping at this point, and I think you guys get the concept of what I'm going through at this point. So let's kick in some 80s montage type shit. So this is my longest run so far. Some interesting things happen, like when I substitute DeGrom in, his stats are visible during gameplay again. Here's the 30th inning. It's officially 8 o'clock in-game. This game started at 1 o'clock, by the way. Seven hours of this. Seven hours of madness. Seven hours of bunts. The sun has started to set at this point. You would think this craziness would make fans leave early. But no! As it turns out, the Mets fans are the most passionate group of baseball fans I've ever seen, as it looks like a majority of the people who came at the start stood all the way to the 30th inning. Even the entire 7 line is still here. Looking at the field itself shows the signs of a long-ass game. The batter's box is practically wiped away. There are so many footprints on the dirt, it looks like we're trying to track down a Scooby-Doo villain. I used up both Max and DeGrom. Funny enough, DeGrom threw an unofficial perfect game in extra innings, by the way. So how far did I get? 31st inning. For a random home run. Yeah, he's really settling in and... This one blasted deep to left. Way out of here. Home run. You know what? We've been through a lot, and I'm honestly fine with that. The game log is longer than a president's Wikipedia page. All for what? Trying to match a relatively obscure 1980s minor league baseball game? Someone who's better at me than the game, aka a lot of you watching, can probably do a much better job at this challenge and get into much later innings. However, I'm happy with that final run, all things considered. We bunted, we struck dudes out, we broke some ribs, we stood aimlessly still, graphics got stuck on the screen, broke some bats, and had a game that lasted over seven hours. You might say that's a complete waste of time, and that's because it is.